All right, so uh, my name is Emirat. Welcome to the MZRC's YouTube channel. And today we're doing uh, a review on my first RC boat. And this is also my first RC review too. So, you know, I guess let me know in the comments if I did okay. You know, we'll figure it out from there. So this is a Pro Boat Jet Jam. It's a 12 inch um, RC jet boat. Uh, everything's included. It's got a jet pump system, so there's no exposed prop for you to cut your finger on, not that you could, but it also is self-riding. And actually, a funny story about this model too, this is actually a version one uh, jet jam, which they actually discontinued, I think, four or five months ago. Um, but my uh, local hobby shop in Rapid City, South Dakota, actually had some new old stock that I didn't realize it, you know, until I got home. So I'm kind of like, hey, that's kind of cool. I've got a, a boat they don't make anymore. <laughs> um, you know, there's only minor differences between the version one and the version two. This one has a different transmitter. Um, compared to the version two, the version two is a much more refined and nice quality transmitter uh, with an actual button for the self-riding versus this, you just have to mess with the trigger. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this box. So I paid uh, 109 bucks for it. I paid a little bit more than I wanted, but I got it right away since I was at a hobby shop. So you can see some stuff there, you know, self-writing, safe jet pump, ready to run, decals, run anywhere, rain or snow. So what do you get in the box? So you get the uh, Jet Jam Bull Racer, the 2.4 gigahertz radio system right there. There's the racer. You get the boat stand, the 1500 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, the USB battery charger, which I think it said took, takes about two hours. That's not too bad. Two decal sheets, and then the, um, they, they're calling it a cup, but I'd call it the boat recovery system. It's 12 inches, 4.5 inches, injection molded ABS for the whole material, three inches, it's got a 390 size brush motor, and it's got a Pro Boat 2.4 gigahertz marine system. You can get it in two different colors, orange or white. I believe this one's orange, and there's what it kind of looks like from the outside. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and open it. There we go. Okay. So here's what you get. So you get your instruction manuals, you know, how to charge your batteries, how to drive the boat, that kind of thing. You get what is that? some stickers. You get the, the whole stickers, which are this sheet right here. Um, you know, some important basic stuff. You get the transmitter which is actually, it's decent quality. You know, it feels a little weird, but it works well enough. Hopefully I have some double A's for this. I'm not known for having double A's. Um, also got the, the boat stand, which is really just a simple piece of plastic with the uh, words pro boat on it, but it works. You get your USB charger. Yep, USB lithium ion charger. Oh, here we go, here's some stuff. Uh, so flashing green, charging, standing red, I mean solid red, standby, solid green, charge complete. So five volts, one amp at least. So, you know, you could use your laptop. It might take a while though. I recommend using a um, RC charging, not RC, phone charging brick like this. So if you, if you have one of these, it's laying around. These are really good. Um. Yeah, output 7.4 volts, 500 milliamp hours. And then, oh, that's right, I forgot. This thing really is ready to run because the battery, uh-oh, comes, just give me a sec. Uh, you know, the battery comes slightly charged and that kind of stuff. And then I forgot you also get four AA's with it. So you can literally just pick this thing up and go straight to the lake and have some fun. 
Wow, I'm struggling. And uh, here, so this is the 1500 milliamp hour uh, 2S lithium ion battery, 11.1 watt hours, 7.4 volts. It's got your typical, what is this? Is I think it's an SMP4 plug, but I can't remember. And then your typical uh, bounce plug that plugs into your charger. A little bit something like, uh, I can't tell. There we go, just like that. And of course your batteries, which are definitely Chinese, but they work. Some of this stuff. And now the main event. So this, this is the boat. That, um, let me see if I can have something here for scale. Well, here's the transmitter for scale, I suppose. Um, oh, double A's. So here's one of the packages of two double A's sitting on top of it. If we get a ruler, which... Okay. I have a ruler down there, but I did. Um, we could see it's 12 inches. There's where your jet pump sucks water in. You might be able to see, yeah, you see the little sharp looking thing? That's the, put my finger in the way, there you go. That's the actual internal impeller. And then, yeah, now you can really kind of see it. And then this steers to uh, move the boat. And then we just turn this latch to open it up. And uh, a little note of advice, when you buy these, and you can't find the, the little hook at first because it's not in the box, and I thought I had gotten like ripped off, it's actually inside the box. So, inside the, the boat. But uh, here's the inside. Um, there's your jet pump mechanism. It's been all silicone sealed and stuff down here. And then right here is the rubber coupler from the 390 size brush motor. It's got a little bit of pep to it. You know, not a whole lot, but definitely some. And then right here, your motor leads from your combined ESC and receiver, your antenna, the on-off switch is right in here. Can read on that motor. I can't quite see because I have it mounted weird. Um, one benefit though I will say about it being a 390 size motor is that this mounting plate is fairly standard so ideally you could swap in a different turn. You could swap in a different 390 motor that has more or less turns depending on if you wanted more um, speed or not. Um, or even some of those like Amazon brushless combos I think you might even be able to get fit in here. It's got a typical uh, micro, server, micro servo. It is. Uh, five wires, which kind of sucks, but honestly, you know, you keep the motor in here and you upgrade the ESC and everything else, you'd be fine. But yeah, it's actually a pretty good little unit. I'm rather happy with it. An O-ring around here to help um, keep water out, and then your stickers and stuff go in here. There's some kind of weird, yeah, there you go, kind of weird material on it. I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, but it's a very, very odd material. I think it's probably just, you know, leftover silicone or something when they were siliconing it or something like that. And then this uh, sticks on there, oop, and then you twist that to tighten it down. And then there's the screw hole where your Where that mounts, like right about there. Um, so I've got to go charge the battery, so we're gonna have to wait a little bit. But um, we'll be here out on the pond very shortly. All right, so I'm back. Uh, battery's fully charged, and got the charger right here. I did go ahead and throw some stickers on. I think they look pretty good. I went with the yellow and blue. I think it looks nest nicest with the orange. The one sticker that irritates me a little bit is I messed up on this one. This one is not put on very centered. But that one's fine. 
Yeah, those two are a little off center, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, but it actually went really, really well. Uh, charging wise, I um, it says uh, sixty to ninety minutes in the booklet. Uh, it took a little bit longer for me, but typically first time charges do take longer. At least that's what I understand. Yeah, sixty to ninety minutes. It depends on your power source. So, for instance, I was using this LG phone brick which does uh, 5 volts at 1.8 amps. Um, now the transmitter feels very nice. You know, I haven't used it yet, but the transmitter feels very nice. Uh, one thing I also forgot to mention, I'm going to show you guys the transmitter um, before I charge the battery, was it actually has a low battery alert as well. So that will light up when, you're, when your battery on your vehicle is getting low, which is, you know, good, because you don't want to get stuck out there. That would suck. So it's in the smuts off there. But yeah, it actually sits on the boat stand pretty nice. And this mounts on the front just like that, so you can recover stuff. It's actually pretty cool. Um So yeah, our next visit will be the pond, but first let me show you these sticker sheets. I think the white would look the best with this yellow and uh, red. Because, I mean, I looked at this blue and the white, but the blue and the white just doesn't really seem to contrast with the orange, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'll throw this in there, and we will head down there. Alright, so we're back down by the pond. There's a nice thunderstorm brewing behind me, but it'll be okay. So, uh, got the stickers on. They actually all went on pretty straight. Back ones were okay. That one was good. The one that was the worst is that. You can kind of see it's, whoop, not quite centered. But, go ahead and try to fire this up now. Uh, yeah, so it seems like with this one, maybe you have to actually turn the boat on before you turn the transmitter on, which I guess makes sense where it's a boat, but should be ready to go now. Um, Set it down here. Seems like we're good. Oh yeah, that'll go. Okay, yeah, there's no reverse, that's not... That's how I know these things don't normally have reverse. But as you can see, it actually puts around very nicely, and if you, if you get, let it get going, it'll go. But I don't know. I mean, I think one of those little, like, Amazon brush to see see motor combos would spice this thing up a little bit. Um, it does have self-riding, though, so let's, oh, let's test that. I can't turn it on. I will say, though, it has a very tight turning circle because it's a jet. Whoa. The, the self riding functionality. Uh, uh. Yep, there we go. Uh, oh, whoops. Oh. The one thing that sucks is that that reverse. I kind of thought it had reverse, but I should know this. We have a 1997 Sea Doo jet boat, so I should know how jet boats work, but I don't apparently. I might need to trim it a little.
I mean, this is my first RC boat, so I don't know how it handles compared to a prop-driven boat. Um, it's definitely interesting, though. Another thing to note, too, though, is where it is a jet boat, you have to be moving to change directions. Like, if I go and I stop here, I can't change directions just by turning because, uh, well, it's a jet. <laughs> but it does doesn't seem to be doing pretty good. The water's nice and warm at the pond today, so that definitely helps. Now let's do a, a water test after, because it looked like the nose kind of went under there. And, uh, oh yeah. Oh no, we're fine. Ain't a, ain't a drop, oop. Uh oh. There ain't a drop of water in there. Now, I don't know, you know, if we want to do more RC boat reviews. I think that would be fun. Um, I think this one went pretty oop, pretty well. I said that as I bang the camera. Um, you know, I know there's some other, other boats. I've looked at some stuff on Amazon, and there's been some boats on Amazon that have really good reviews that are like 40 bucks that I've been thinking about getting, like, Two batteries and everything. I mean, they seem pretty decent. Let's see what happens if we just uh, toss it out there. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Actually, glides really nicely in this pond. I mean, you know, I do wish it was a little faster, but it's definitely not bad. For a first-time boat, that's definitely not too bad. I need to work on the trim a little bit. Um, but, you know, this boat would also be good for rivers, because it can go in uh, less than three inches of water. Oh, my bad. Uh, three inches or more water. So if you had a big enough puddle, theoretically, you could drive this in there. Now they also make another variant that's also a jet boat. It's nine inches, and it's called the the Pro Boat Sprint Jet, which is a, a nine inch variant of the this jet boat. Not 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 this design, but of the jet boat. And um, it, it looks more like an actual river jet boat, but I think it's got a 380 brush motor in it, and it's definitely not this fast, but it's. Still something you could definitely have fun with. Really not that bad, though. And then, you know, you put your cover... Well, I cannot speak today. You put your recovery hook on there. And then... You know, why not? Let's just test the self-riding again. Oh, well, unless it does that. Oh, yeah. It actually has a pretty nice little pace, though. I mean, you can let it... It's got some kick. Definitely small, but has some kick. Bring in this girl here. It's kind of like the nose guy that slows speed, so it's kind of funny. There you go. It's actually got a pretty good little spin. I mean, yeah, it'll get going if you let it. You get out on some glassy water like this. Not 
too noisy either, which I do like. Oh, some of these boats, they get like... They're so loud, it's like, you don't want to be disrupting the peace of this thing's... This thing's definitely quiet enough. So yeah, that's your review of the Pro Boat Jet Jam 12 inch. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope to do some more reviews in the future. You know, maybe perhaps on the TRX4M. Honestly, I'm really new to this whole content creating thing, so I have no idea what you're doing what I'm doing. So you know, this may sound like I'm venting and I kinda am, I guess. I just I honestly don't know. You know, this felt like a pretty good run of, you know, me making stuff. I just, you know, I don't know when it comes to, like, editing and stuff. I still have no idea how to do all that, so. I guess just give me tips, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I'm just filming with my phone right now, which is, uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy S23, which actually is an amazing, uh, camera. But... I think I'm gonna get thunderstormed on now, so I might head inside. But uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time.